Hi. Uh, today I'm going to do a question from the GCSC Physics or Double Award. Uh, this is a foundation tier question, but it will also, I think, appear on the um, beginning of a higher tier paper. It's about radiation and the use of uh, radioactive sources to, in this particular instance, to measure the thickness of uh, paper or aluminium foil passing through some rollers. So they've given us a huge amount of information up here. This is one of the sort of things we talk about as a PISA question where you have to do some reading in advance of actually doing the question. But the long and the short of all of this up here is that this radioactive source here um, sends radiation, some of which penetrates through the aluminium foil to a uh, counter on this side. And then they're able to control the rollers to adjust the thickness. Underneath this, we've got a whole table full of different radioactive isotopes. Uh, it tells us their half-life. It tells us their decay. It gives us some extra information as well here. Um, and then we flip over for the actual questions. So they started off nice and easy. They ask us to tick some statements. So these are all recall statements. Uh, alpha radiation consists of a helium nucleus. Or helium nuclei. Yes, I agree. Alpha radiation is more ionizing than gamma. Yep, that's true. Strontium-90 has 90 nucleons. That's true as well. Now that makes me nervous, so I'm just going to check the rest of them. Gamma radiation consists of low energy waves. Well, actually they're high energy waves, so I don't like that one. Gamma radiation only travels a short range in air. The range of gamma is huge, so we're going to leave that one. And beta radiation consists of slow, should be fast moving electrons. So all of those three there are wrong. One of the students suggests that the strontium-90 is the most suitable isotope. Explain whether we agree with it or not. So we've got to think about what it's doing. It needs to penetrate through the aluminium foil. Um, if it was alpha, it wouldn't even pass through paper, so it can't be alpha, so anything that's an alpha source is out. If it was a gamma source, then uh, it would pass very easily through the aluminium, so it would be, um, you wouldn't detect any difference. So it needs to be either this one or this one as a beta source. This one has got a half-life of 30 years, pretty much. This one of 14 days. So if we were to use this beta source, we'd be changing the, the machinery all the time. So this is the most suitable one. So um, explain whether you agree. So I agree. Always start with your um, the statement, I agree, uh, because uh, beta will pass through thin aluminium, um, but alpha won't, and gamma won't have a detectable change. With a half-life of 29 years, it won't need replacing too often. Okay, so explain what is meant by the statement half-life. So um, it is, it, or it will take 29 years for the activity to drop to half the original. Okay, then we've got a nice, they're, they're very common this question, they, they like it. Um, so calculate the time it takes to fall to one eighth of its initial value. So it will be um, uh, full after zero years. So it will be half after one half life. And one half life is 29 years. So uh, it will be a quarter after another half life. So that will be uh, 58 years. And then it will be, um, sorry, a quarter, not half there. Uh, and it'll be 1 over 8 is my next one. Uh, so I need to add another 29 years to this. So that's going to be 70, 87 years. So 
87 years. Okay, so it's just a, an arithmetic sequence. It's just a, a number puzzle for you to solve. So in the next part of this question, we've got um, a measurement of the background radiation. So that's the radiation, the natural radiation in the room around us. And we've got 150 in five minutes. And they want us to find the counts per second. Now they've put that in bold for a reason. It's always worth watching out for that. So the first thing we need to do is do counts per minute. So that's 150 over five. And that's going to give me 30 counts per minute seconds. So I need to divide it by 60 again to give me counts per second. So that's going to be 30 divided by 60 because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And that's going to cancel those. That's 3 over 6. That's going to equal 0 0.5. So that's 0 0.5 counts per second. Suggest two ways which the teacher could improve the accuracy of her result. That's the correctness. She could repeat uh, and check. Or she could uh, do the experiment for a longer time. Okay, I hope that's been useful. This um, is the back end of a foundation tier paper, so it's one of the hardest questions on foundation tier. Or, or it's, it's about right for the beginning of a higher tier paper as well. I hope that's been helpful for you today.